Now I want to move into plugins, and I think that um, inevitably we're going to kind of loop back into uh, Can I ask you another theme themes. Themes, yeah. yeah. What about if you want to change themes down the line uh -huh. in terms of your data? Theme changing doesn't affect data. It doesn't affect the posts. It doesn't affect um, the pages. That's still there. Um, it might change where things are located. So if you've customized the sidebar, which that's actually where we're getting into next, um, then you might have to rebuild some of that work that you've done. Um, but all of your posts are safe. All of your pages are safe. Uh, when we looked at the diagram at the very beginning, when we said stuff is stored on the server, it's actually stored in a database on the server. So it's it's. Uh, it's pretty locked down in terms of that data's not going anywhere. Changing the theme doesn't affect it. Um, great question, though. So plugins, um, a lot of these things, the questions that come up that are a little bit more about, you know, what if you have something here, what if you have something there? So a lot of those questions might actually bleed more into plugins because plugins are going to add functionality to the site um, beyond just the look and the feel and where things are. So I'll give you a good example um, on this site that I have is that um, you might want to disable you might want to disable the built-in commenting system uh, and enable uh, Facebook commenting. Uh, it's a really easy example, right? You've seen Facebook commenting systems appear on other websites. It's really nice because the, the person who visits your site, they if they're logged into Facebook, um, they're good to go, they just comment, you don't have to create a separate profile, et cetera, et cetera. So that's an example of a kind of a plugin. And so do you see the difference already? I mean, when we talked about themes, we said it changes the look and the feel, where things are. But when we say plugin, it's adding functionality, right? And there's actually a kind of a subset, uh, if it's um, fair to say that, called a widget, okay? And they basically do very similar things, they add functionality. Now widgets are a little bit nicer because with a plugin traditionally, you are gonna um, maybe have to get into a little bit more coding, whereas a widget is very drag and drop. Um, now where the themes and the plugins and the widgets <laughs> cross paths is that the theme dictates where a widget can go. Does that make sense? So you might have a sidebar in your theme. In fact, most often that's how it is. You have a sidebar in your theme, and there is an area within that sidebar that's uh, widgetized, as they call it, which means that you could put widgets in it. Question about that? Oh, I just, can you repeat that first thing you said about widgets? So widgets are more drag and drop, whereas plugins may require a little bit of code knowledge. Yeah. So let's say uh, I want to add Picasso, Picasso photos uh, to my site, right? So I have a plugin, or a widget, sorry, that I've installed. I drag it over to the sidebar, <coughs> drag and drop, boom, puts it in there. Now I might have to fill in some additional information, but with a widget, right, it's pretty much just typing in information, right? I need to know, that it wants to know what I want to call this. Do I want to call it photo journal or whatever? Uh, it might need to know my account information, something like that. But I'm not going in and coding anything, right? Now I get both of these in the plugins area of my site by going to add new. And go to the plugin directory. And WordPress.org also has a directory of plugins. Now here I, I am more familiar with because I have done things like install Facebook plugins. So you can do a pretty broad search like that. Let's see what plugins have to do with Facebook. Add a link to Facebook. You can see there's a rating on it. A lot of these plugins, um, you might go and see screenshots of them. You can see them in action. There's an FAQ that describes uh, or has you know, frequently asked questions. What are people wondering about? Now, just like themes, these are developed by individuals or companies. So th there's a broad range of the types of things you can find and also kind of a broad range of the support that you might find for these plugins. Um, but really what comes in handy when you get into plugins, or I might just say I want to search for widgets, right? So it's allowing me to do more things um, than 
the theme might allow me to do. So question earlier about maybe like a social button where it says, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Facebook. That might be a widget that I drag into a sidebar, right? And then that appears within my blog, right? Question? Any chance to add one to see how long? Yeah, yeah. So, I'm gonna add new. What do we wanna look for, anything? I'll just do Facebook. <laughs> So I've gone to the plugin section of my site. I said add new. I did a search for Facebook. Let's do a widget. So they both do the same thing um, in terms of adding functionality to your site. They just operate differently in terms of how it's installed on the site. So let me do a widget first. Um, so I'm doing a widget. I'm going to say install. Are you sure you want to install the plugin? Boom, it's installed. Now, a plugin or a widget isn't necessarily automatically going to do anything <laughs> at first. You have to activate it. Okay, so even though it's installed, not necessarily working. Say activate. So a widget is a kind of plugin. Correct. A widget is a kind of a plugin. Yes. No, they are the same things, S similar things. Um, so now that I have that widget installed, I can go to the widgets area under appearance, and here's all these Facebook widgets that have been added, and I want to put those in the sidebar. I can just drag them over, new widget, I guess I have to give this one dimensions, save, and then I have too many tabs open. <laughs> Let's see what that one did. Oh, there's my photo plugin. Oh, there we go. Okay. So it's now added this functionality to log into Facebook. I'm not actually sure what functionality it added. There was a couple of them. This one does activity feed. So if I was logged in, it would show a feed of, of uh, what's going on with the website. Yeah. If you move that uh, widget to the top, mm -hmm. then on the on the background, but on the front ground, mm -hmm. it, it will show on the top as well. So if I move this widget to the top, yeah. like this, so I drag it to the top. Will it change? Yeah. So I do that, uh -huh. and then will it change here? I have to reload the page because I've made a change. Um, like and there it is. Yep. So that's that's the neat thing about widgets. It's very drag and drop. Uh, there's a question here and a question there. You give an example. If you wanted to disable the comment on WordPress, if uh -huh. it was a Facebook comment, uh -huh. would you use a plugin or a widget for that? Um, so you want to use the Facebook comments, like I just said. Yes, um, so. would, it, you could use. Um, I'm using a plugin for it, so it requires me to put um, a little bit of code into uh, my my uh, post. So I had to actually change some code. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Yeah. Question over here. Yeah. Plugins, widgets, widgets are draggable. Mm -hmm. Plugins are where they go. Are they is that dependent on the theme? Mm -hmm. So, when you have a plugin, let's let's look at an example of a plugin next. But yeah, typically with a plugin, it requires an extra step that's not quite the same as just dragging it over. Um, it might integrate at a lower level automatically, or it might require me to go in and do some, some coding, put in, some. put in something extra, yeah. But typically, yes, yeah, so a widget is draggable, and then a plugin might be something else. Yeah? Uh, put in a video or a dissolve or like a flash, is that as a plugin? Dissolve, like? You know, like a photo and a slideshow. Ah, okay, so you want to add a slideshow to, to your blog. Um, that could be either one, a widget or a plugin. Typically, a widget is only going to show up in certain areas, right? Like the sidebar or a widgetized area of the theme. So I think to go back to what we're talking about with themes, when we're talking about a lot of those customization options, where you say, I want to be able to put things here or there or there or there, you can choose a theme that allows you to put widgets in different areas. So on this site that we're looking at, the only place I can put widgets is on the sidebar, uh, on the right-hand uh, sidebar. That's just how that theme is coded. 
Um, but there's another theme here that we were looking at, and this is also a widget area. And the reason why I'm able to do that is because the theme dictates where those widgets can go. It allows me to put uh, widget areas into the top or the side or bottom or really anywhere. So um, if, if you know you are going to want to have a lot of widgets and you want them in certain areas, then yeah, you're going to want to choose a theme that allows you to do that. So a plugin just integrates at a lower level and a widget only goes in certain areas. So I mean, depending on what you're looking for, if you want to build a portfolio, you might you choose either one. Yeah. Um, how do you know where your widget friendly areas are? Yeah. Great question. So it's um, in the. Do, 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 do. I have too many tabs open. But yeah, so <laughs> when I go to the widget area, I know where the widgets are because on the right hand side here, all of my widget areas are going to be uh, laid out there. Um, so for this one, for instance. I got a widget. So this is the theme that we're just looking at that had a headline on it. So this one has an area called banner that has a widget. So, so you would get those here and then that would allow you to, to do it where it is, yeah. <laughs> um, so I wanna go back to a plugin. And let's say that we do the Facebook comments because I just wanna, um, it sounds like you guys get the difference which is, again, it's just a draggable, widgets are a little bit more draggable, but they only go in certain areas. Plugin integrates at a lower level. Um, I just want to see an example. Uh, Facebook comments, details. So let me see, I think I have this one installed on this. Ah, here we go. So this is that plugin in action. So in this one, um, it may have required me to go in and add the code in. Maybe it doesn't. But over here on the left, I have a settings page, uh, or settings section of my blog, or my site. And uh, it has actually installed uh, uh, additional settings that are related to that particular plugin. So this is actually going to determine what's happening uh, with that plugin. So there's um, additional steps beyond um, just putting it in a widgetized area. It might integrate, in this case, it's integrating anywhere there's a comment. This comment plugin will activate. So it's coming up where it's needed versus only in a particular widgetized area. How do you turn it off, though, from the page? How do you turn off a plugin? Yeah. On if you have an existing comment on the page that belongs to WordPress, yep. how do you turn that off? If you that's a separate question. Oh. So yeah, yeah that, that's a good question though. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I just want to mention one thing too is that with the plugins and the widgets, again, that's a distinction between whether to go with WordPress.com or WordPress.org. With WordPress.org and your own self-hosted site, you're, you have much more of of full access to the types of plugins and widgets that are available to you, whereas with WordPress.com you're more relegated to uh, what options they have built in. And they have a lot that are already installed, but you don't have full access, full reign to do just whatever you want. But one of the advantages of the .com would be that everything's upgraded for you all the time, right? Yes. So is it an advantage, WordPress.com, that everything is updated for you automatically? Yes. If you're self-hosting your site, and you're the admin on it. You do have to keep track of updates. So if you visit that plugin page, in fact, uh, here it says that there are three updates available. So I have to make sure that I'm on top of those updates. And if the update breaks something, like a new WordPress update up breaks that plugin, um, that's more my responsibility to figure out what, what happens. So WordPress.com, if the question is, is it safer to go there? Yeah, because there's less things that could break. On the downside, though, it's less customizable, so it doesn't have the look that you want, necessarily. Yeah. Does that answer it? Yeah.